Everybody, welcome back to the first episode of the year for Simply no, Unprofessional. Of time. Simply Not Unprofessional a... ended, Webby. No, that was just a prank. No, no, it ended. This is Simply Unprofessional Part D. Part D. <laughs> part D. <duh. laughs> this is Electric Boogaloo. This Simply is... <laughs> Unprofessional Part Two. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> um. Yeah. Hey. Devin, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How it's are a new, you? It's you know? a new year, you know, a new, new year, year, new me, that whole bullshit. I, hey, I don't know. Not to be a Debbie Downer. How you doing, nothing. co-host Rob? Insert crickets here. Insert crickets. I'm not going to do that, but everybody can use their imagination. If we, if somebody edited this, then yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't edit. The most I do is every so often, if I forget to put the intro music, I'll tell you guys what. If I'll you just want, insert that. If you want, if you want a higher quality edit show, edited show, I'm gonna need you guys to like us a bunch of times, share us around the world, get us into Russia. If you get us into Russia, motherfuckers, I will have somebody edit S U every week. We can just hire an editor. We can just yeah. hire an editor and True she'll that. sit in a booth, like you know, they will sit in a booth and like just feed us fucking topics and we'll yep. just talk. And be yep. like, hey, and they can do research for us on the fly. Like, we, we can just say shit off the top of our head. Like, Devin, oh man, What's my that? goal, okay, is goal? for What's me and you to about? be able to record SUs weekly, sitting at a table across from each other, looking into each other's eyes, smiling with our editor, editor lady over in the editor booth, and producer, and, and producer produ- lady over in the booth. Just every so often chiming in, and then we can say, "Shut up, Karen from Subway." It's not none of your business. Wouldn't that be really funny though? Like down the road, eventually, like our producer and editor is somehow named Craig. Like he's a guy. Named oh my Craig. god, I'd hate him. I'd be like, "Fuck you, Craig." No one likes you. Um, <laughs> but no, like, and for us to be able to do that on a weekly basis, and even if we could generate some form of income to the point where we could travel to do these shows. That I mean, would be I'm fantastic. Down. That's that 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 would be the goal. If, we could we take can a make hop, this, jump, and skip across the pond and go see if our. We can make this a full time job. I'd be down for it. You oh, know what? Man. Maybe 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 once we get into Russia, we'll explode with the Russian audience, and we'll. I both do love the fucking Russians, Russia. dude. Me too. We love the Russians. We love we your love goddamn bears? bears. All right, we are. I mean, we I'm, are pro bears. <laughs> I don't hate vodka. I'm cool with vodka. Yeah, I mean that's the only time I've ever gotten a hangover was on f- vodka. But I mean, yeah, I'm a tequila man myself, but yeah. you know we can do vodka. So, I'm okay with vodka. I will say, by like Sky Vodka or some shit. Oh, like, dude, that'd be great. It. I just what want, like, I just want some like eccentric billionaire Russian to be like, "Yo, I heard you like a bear," and then oh, just what, like oh, what, he just like hold on, hold on, hold on. pays us. What are to those do guys called? Shit. Hold on, what do those guys call eccentric Russian? billionaires? <laughs> no, no, no. There's like um, uh, oligarchs. We're sponsored by an oligarch. What yes. the hell's an oligarch? I, I've heard this word before. What is this? An oligarch is is a ruler in an oligarchy, or in Russia specifically, um, a very rich business leader with a great deal of political influence. There we go. We just get sponsored by an oligarch, and they're just rich. And they just It'd do be, stuff. Oh, dude, it would be cool if our producer slash editor was just a bear. And he's just I mean, sitting there Ru- like, Russia has, 90, at Russia has 96 billionaires. So I mean, theoretically, there's 96 get us to Russia, Russia, people. What are you doing? So we just need one billionaire, and we don't even need a billion dollars. Like, we like if somebody came in and was like, "Hey, you know what? I'll pay you guys Yo, 60k hit- a year. Each of you 60k a year. Do no, this. that'd be dope. Every, I would quit my job. <laughs> I would do this right now. I'd be like, "All right, we're done." I'd be like, "Wrapping well, it up." Devin, I'd be like, Devin, one of us has got to move to the other place because fucking I mean, we're getting or, paid to do or this. We're, or we're both moving to Russia. I don't fucking yeah, care. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'll go to, it's cold in Russia, though. But I mean, I'm if, cool. I, if I can get I mean, a pet you know bear, what? it'll keep me warm. 
pet bear. Yeah. I'm down with Russian girls. What's up, Russian girls? Yeah, what doing what's up? There? Okay, I don't know where to go from this. But Vampire dude, Hunter D. <laughs> that is today's episode. That, 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 that is was our the topic. best segue ever. What are you talking about? Yep. Yo, I love Russian girls. Vampire Hunter D, folks. All right. Let me let me let me say something about Vampire Hunter D. This was this was a, an anime that was you had me watch the original, correct? This was back in yeah. 1985. Yes, 85. All the one you were watching, I think, was the one that was remastered in 2000. Okay. It was blu rayed in 2000 or something. That's lines, fine. Yeah. Um, you thankfully you did have me watch the English dubbed version, uh, Junior. which when I started hearing D talk, it sounded really familiar, so I had to go IMDb it and. Uh, D and his left hand, which was a twist in the, in the movie, <laughs> um, is Kinda voiced by Michael McConaughey. Michael Good old McConaughey. Carbuckle? I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce his. I think it's Michael McConaughey. Um, but dude, this guy does fucking voices for lots of for shit. Everything. I the right. reason I knew him was because I'm an avid WoW player, and he does a lot of WoW voices. Like he does um, Arthas, the Lich King. Which is yeah, how I knew him. He does a lot of um, <laughs> Looking down at it, I saw that he was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original movie. And I was like, wow, who the fuck was he? So I googled his name, right? He was Shredder's right-hand man, that Asian dude who never talked. I love it. Uh, except for that one time he had a line, and you just knew that it was really poorly dubbed over. That was this dude talking. <laughs> It was great. Um, I love it. I was like, yes. oh, man, you played Tetsu? That's great. You voiced Tetsu. That's what it was. You didn't play him. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah he's uh, he does voices for Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls, Hearthstone. He he does a lot of the so Blizzard Calibre stuff. Or um, he voiced Astaroth and So Calibre, oh, so Calibre 6, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, um, he's the narrator in that Hunter x Hunter TV series that I know you guys yes, were talking about. Is. I love Hunter X Hunter so much. Um, yeah, oh, dude, so this guy, this guy does a lot, and uh, I, I will say that that kind of kept me interested in this movie. Devin, I am gonna, uh, I am gonna be a little controversial here. Okay, controversial boy, homie. I watched the whole movie. Okay. I liked aspects of it. Hmm. Overall, I just, it, I, it, I wasn't drawn in. I just, I wasn't too big of a fan of this movie. I mean that's fine. um again that's fine. I think with me like you know how I am with animes I'm very mm-hmm. hit or miss yeah. um and with me I think again it boiled back down to almost uh like how it was with that other one the the gun western cowboy bebop one it was just um, slow to build up for you well it wasn't even that is I think it was just more so the art style I, I didn't really particularly care for and it just kind of yeah. like it it yeah. didn't grasp my interest yeah, I mean, it was it's definitely older. Um, and the original Vampire Hunter D novels, um, the art the art style is very like that. Everybody's kind of elongated. I will say, okay, spoiler alerts. As always, when we talk about stuff, if you haven't fucking learned by now, eventually I'm just gonna stop it's saying a spoiler. Alert. Movie. This is a 1985. Yeah. Movie. I'm eventually this just is, gonna if stop I, if I'm saying spoiling spoiler. Spoiling something alert. for you. Actually, a lot of people haven't seen this. So, I mean, it's not like. I mean, I haven't seen this till last night. Yeah. Um, I think you will like the second one better, though, if you would take time to watch it. I'm just going to. Say I mean, that. I probably will because it's it's from your recommendation, and I and I usually watch per anything you would tell me to. So don't take that. I mean, don't abuse that power, Devin. I'm not going to abuse because <laughs> <that power. laughs> then you won't listen to me anymore. So I, I have I, to. I have to balance the good and the bad. Like I have to force. I know when to force my hand and when not to force my hand. I will say. There were a few twists in this movie that I liked. Uh, like right off the bat, okay, the very very beginning, where like the chick had her whip. That was the same chick the whole movie, right? That, yeah, the that was this. Chick, um, yeah. That was Doris or whatever. Yeah, Doris. That was yeah. Doris. Totally. Okay, so at the very beginning when she loses her horse, I was kind of interested. She's sitting there. I'm like, oh, you know, she's she's chasing this weird demon thing, and then she has like this giant fucking laser rifle. I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. Uh, it's it's a mix between like futuristic. 
it's very dark heavy ages. metal, like heavy metal yeah. style, almost like. And, and I can get behind this that. Would fit right in with heavy metal. Yeah, and I can get behind that. I liked the heavy metal uh, comics and and the movie or movies. Um, but uh, yeah, I like as soon as she met D. I was like, okay, so this must be D. This is, you know, obviously this is the character that the movie's named after. He's the vampire hunter. I, for whatever reason, whether I have heard about this movie prior or I'd read something about this movie prior, I don't know why, but I knew he was a dump here. Just, it just clicked with me, like, right off the bat. I was like, oh, this dude's part vampire. And, uh, but the twist at the end about him being essentially made by Dracula. Didn't, yeah. Didn't he's, see that coming. Effectively. Um, because that's by, the whole premise. By Dracula or he is Dracula's son. It's kind of not, they don't know. Right. It's now that's the yet. whole, that's the whole premise here is Dracula is in this story is essentially the first and or the oldest vampire. Yes. And he he's sired this line, which they call nobles. Every noble is a vampire. Correct. Yes. Okay. And they're all really powerful vampires, too. They're all, right. like, stupid, powerful vampires. Yeah, this motherfucker like, so, got stabbed in the eye, pulled his eye part way out, pulling the dagger out, and then it just kind of sucked back into his head and healed over. It was fucking weird. <laughs> um, what? So, have you read the books or anything on this? Uh, it's been a while. I've read a couple of them back in, like, high school. Um, it's okay. been a while, because there's a lot of books for this. So let me ask um, you this. I'm going to jump around all the fuck around on this one. You go right ahead. What's with his left hand talking? His left hand. Best character <laughs> in the show, in the movie, by the way, is his Constant fucking Carbuckle. left hand. Yep. Uh, I think that's the name of the left hand specifically. I think it's Constance Carbuckle. On IMDB, it's literally just called left hand. Right, right, right. But I mean, hold on a second. Um, is, it, is it Constance? And how does he gain nourishment? Because he was eating dirt. Oh, the left hand? Yep. I mean, his left hand... I'll, let me explain you what his left hand is. All right. Right now, hold on. His left hand. His left hand, a.k.a. Sorry, not, not constant. It's countenanced carbuckle. Um, <laughs> countenance. All right. That's even yeah. older. C- C-O-U-N-T-E-N-A-N-C-E-D. <laughs> yeah. Is a symbiotic partner of Vampire Hunter D. Uh, he is. Doo, 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 doo. See, not much is nothing is known of D of Left Hand's past, other than he did serve the Sacred Ancestor at some point before joining D. The nature of his being is unknown. Um, Mashir is stated to be of his kind, implying there are more of him, and he is a kind of species. Other than that, nothing is known about how he was born or where, he, when, and where exactly he joined with D. He seems to know the Crystal Palace language, a language that is only known to those who lived 10,000 years ago. This would place his age to be older than 10,000 years. Um, although odd, this unnamed entity comes with many special abilities. The first of his abilities is the ability to place any weak-minded individual into a hyp- hypnotized slumbering state. Which he does. Also in the use movie. The, yes. He, he can also use the sleep. elements. He does. He can also use the elements to save the likes of himself or his host D. Once he consumes an object or element, he can store it until he either spits it out or uses all of it up. So effectively he can like absorb or like eat the elements, so air, fire, earth, and water. That's why he was eating dirt. Yep. Okay. And then he can use he can then use that and like use it to like protect himself or whatever. I think uh, we got, did he like raise like spike pillars or something in the movie? I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't remember now. I watched it like two weeks ago and I was like, I'm trying to think. Um, if he raised spike pillars or not. Anyway, yeah, he so he can eat all that stuff, do it, he can eat fire, all that stuff. He can to use the elements, he must first consume enough of one of the four elements. The elements are earth, air, fire, earth, water. Once he consumes earth, he can revive D. There we go. Ah, okay. Once he consumes earth, he can revive D even if he was pierced in the heart or kill an average enemy with a single strike. Once consuming water, he is able to freeze objects solid by touching them or breathing on them. After consuming fire, he can then breathe immensely hot flames that can only be matched by the matched by the range in which it can reach. Finally, as as air, after he consumes enough air, he can then propel objects at extreme speeds. Okay. Once he consumes more than one element, he can give D increased strength or agility. But after consuming all four elements, he can grant D with a power that can even match that of D's father, aka also known as Dracula. So how come he didn't do that in the movie? 
Uh, that that came up later in the books. Oh, all right. So that's, that's probably what. yeah. So he's just a uh, he's just a face that lives in a hand. He's a creature of some type. <laughs> he's by far, I think, the best character. I love his 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 conversations with D. Oh yeah, like he's, um, he, he's constantly like putting him down. Like he's he's like, I don't know. He's like the little devil on your shoulder. Just he's the little devil in your left hand. Yep. So I mean, the left hand is a, left hand is a devil's hand. Right. So or so they say. So at the very beginning, this Doris chick gets her horse eaten by a werewolf. By oh, well, it gets bit by something else, and then it gets taken away by a werewolf. And then she meets this fucking vampire who's fucking humongous. And he's like the oldest. He's like the highest noble in the area, I guess. And the vampire bites her. So now she's on a quest to get a vampire hunter to slay this guy so she doesn't turn. Um, I don't specifically know the lore in this in this movie about how if a certain amount of time has to pass or whatnot, or why the vampire let her kind of go on her own way for a little while the way he did. Um, but she ends up meeting D, and he takes on the job. Uh, so that's essentially the premise, is now D is just going to go and he's going to protect her and go kill this head vampire guy. So the first night after he accepts this job, the vampire doesn't show up, but he sends like hordes of like mutants and his daughter, who later on we find out who th- we think is a noble vampire, uh, but we find out later is also half human. Uh, and by the way, that's what a dompier is, listeners. It's a half human, half vampire hybrid. Yes, vampires uh, in this lore specifically, they like to breed with mortal women. Yeah, creating vampires. So, yep, that's what happens. Um, now this this old ass vampire just wants he wants to he wants to wed Doris mainly just for amusement's sake. Uh, that this is one thing in in lore wise, I will say that I I did like in this movie, Devin, uh, being a big you know, big proponent and vampire. Me and you constantly talk about vampire lore, and uh, I mean it's part of one of our our RPGs that we play. Yep. Um, I do I was like the bite to you in a second when you get done. Okay, I I do like the thought and the premise of a vampire who is so old that literally the years just kind of all meld together, and once you get to a certain age, the you're literally going to die of boredom unless you keep yourself entertained somehow. That's essentially where he's at. He's super powerful. No one opposes him. He's king shit on his, on his high mountain of, of manure and he's bored as fuck. So he's got to bite this human and he's going to, you know, marry her and play with her until she passes on. And then he's going to go another 50 years before he does it all over again. Yep. So the bite, the bite also known as the kiss of nobility, the bite of a vampire, which always leaves a mark on the neck, even if cut or burned away or surgically removed and replaced with a graft of new tissue, the wounds regenerate due to their supernatural nature. Special makeup can be used to conceal these wounds, but most victims are forced to cover the wounds with a scarf. Some people are left relatively unaffected and can live near human villages. Many, however, are banished from their villages and shunned by all but their fellow victims. The kiss of nobility may leave its victims a doll-like imbecile with paraffin pale skin, eager only for another kiss. Evid- Evidently, it can bestow vampire-like regenerative attributes, since in... Uh, I'm not even going to try to read that name. Uh, Dr. Lubick says, Taki speedy recovery. So basically, da, 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 D, like the nobility, used his ability once during the first night where he bit Midwitch Medusa. Yep. Who being demons, yep, should have high resistance or may have been immune to other vampires during in general. So what it sounds like to me, from what I'm reading from this, other than that, there's just like specific examples given. Right. Um. Also, too, kiss marks on the nape of the neck. Um, because kiss marks, or in this case, bites, on the nape of the neck are far too reminiscent of the marks left by nobility. It's taboo to leave them there, even for married couples. So, 
that is something that is kind of cool. Um, specifically, nobility bites at the nape of the neck, so other non-nobles are forbidden to do that. Mm. But, um, so, effectively, a bite, they can do a variety of things. They can, it basically put, places you under their control. They can make you, you know, kind of brain dead, and just mindless, where you just kind of just, yep, I'm pale, and all I want is another, all I want is another kiss. Right. Um, so I'll do your bidding. And then, or they can give you, they can turn you into a vampire-ish, vampire-like kind of a thing out of that bite. So that's how that works. Yay! Okay. Now, my question now is still like, okay, so he bit her. I don't know if they actually said how much time had passed from when she first met this vampire to where she meets D on the road for the first time. But why did he not just take her back to his castle then and lock her away there? Like, why did he leave her in the town until after that blood moon? Uh, I, I'm i trying to think. Was What was the reasoning behind why he left her there? That was one of the things that really, like... That I, just, I know there was I, a reasoning me. why she... There was a reason why I did it. There you like, go. I there understand you go. why he couldn't okay. go so after her on the blood She trespassed into the domain of an ancient vampire called Magnus Lee. Or Magnus Lee. Uh, who was said to be over 10,000 years old, enchanted by her beauty and eager to free himself from his bo- boring time. He bites her in order to make her his, his vampire bride. He lets her live, but she knows he will return to claim her sooner or later. So he basically just marked her. Okay. Case. Since she doesn't have the power to destroy the Count herself, she enlists the help of a vampire hunter simply called D. And that's when it takes it from there. Okay, so... So basically, he essentially he just, just let her go off to let her kind of stew in the idea that, oh, live in fear because one day I'm coming for you and there's nothing you're Effectively, do yep. yep. Okay, I can see that. It makes a little bit more sense now to me. Um, now... There were a couple unique characters in this movie. Um, the little brother. I forget the name. I think his name was... I think his name was just Dan. 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 Dan, Dan Mike. Yeah. Good old um, Dan. There were a couple times, like, based off of his clothing, like, when he's, like, from far away, and you just kind of see his silhouette, like, whatever. He looks like um, like a Dragon Ball Z character. I mean, you're not wrong. And it's just like, oh, man, all right. I guess I guess Goku's in this movie now. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Um, but he was an all right character. I, I like. He's always getting into trouble, and uh, I mean, that's, he's very protective. That's pretty, much, that's pretty much every classic, like, 80s and 90s anime yeah. little brother side character. True. Uh, that's what it always is. You know, he gets into mischief. He's either overprotective or like super sarcastic and rude. It's they now, have like poor personality, but I love it. That first night when people arrived to come and take Doris, mm-hmm. there was the girl who, if I'm not mistaken, was that Lamaka or the, the daughter? Um, yeah, Larma, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that was her. Uh, and then the guy that was with her had—he was just a mutant, I guess. And her, she was a servant, Ray, yeah, uh, Reagan Singh, whatever his name yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ray, that was a mutant. So he, was, he, he was just a mutant dude. He was fighting D, and he was not—he was not doing well. And then D went to go stab him, but then all of a sudden D was stabbed because this guy could like control time. Uh, no, he's what is called a dimension twister. Okay. So he can, um, basically he can alter dimensions. So as like when he got stabbed, he altered the dimension and then D got stabbed. Like he basically made a portal between himself and D. Um, and then D kind of stabbed himself. So why doesn't he just do this all the time? Like he ends up losing his so, fucking hand and he gets, yeah, there's a reasoning why. So, Ray Jinsei is a dimensional twister. Th- uh, th- through his own willpower, he can make a four-dimensional passageway in any part of his body but his arms or legs and okay. link it with the body of his foe. 
In other words, when his foe attacked him, the bullets and blades that broke his skin would travel through extra-dimensional space into the body of his assailant, where they would become real again. D used Rage of Sing's powers against him when he had placed a dimension on D himself, and every time D stabbed him, it would hurt D, so D stabbed himself with the blade, piercing Ray. Smart move. Take that, you bastard. <laughs> Take that one, you bitch. <laughs> uh, now this Ray guy, he comes back, he ends up losing a hand, and he gets real upset about it. Uh, yeah, he, he he gets real upset about that. I remember and, that shit, that shit was funny. And then he comes back with a fucking candle that really puts the wampin down on D. Now, I don't know what the fuck this candle was. It was the incense of something like the bewitching. The time bewitching incense yeah. um, is a subject <clears> of <throat> plants with a main component being the uh, transparent sap from the stalk of the stark white blossom. That is a mouthful and a tongue twister to say the transparent sap from the stalk of the stark white blossom. I'd say that five times fast. <laughs> Once repaired, its sin is capable of turning day into night for those of the vampiric nobility. This allows them to use as it uh, use use it as there you go to save their eternal lives from destruction during daylight hours, but left them critically exposed during nighttime. So what he did was he reversed night and day. Basically, for D, night and day was reversed. Okay. So those with the blood of nobility were unable to escape the effects of the incense. Even dampiers were or affected by its use, with some being driven mad by its effects. So okay. effectively, at night, since night was treated as daytime, and D during the daytime, as you know, is weaker. That you found out in the show, he's weaker during the day. I mean, he doesn't show it. He, I mean, yeah, you know, he because uh, that chick like used her electric whip at the very beginning and like just wrapped him up, and he's just like shrugs that shit off. I mean, he's a, he's a badass, but yeah, fair. I mean, he he's a badass, but yeah. <sighs> All right. So then at this point, at that point, when he uses that bewitching incense thing or whatever, he essentially gives D a good whooping and then stakes him and then cuts his fucking left hand off in retaliation for him getting his left hand cut off. I think he cut, he cut the wrong fucking hand off. (laughs) He did. He really did. He really Um, did. But it's funny. Poor confidence. He didn't ask for that. No. Poor confidence. He didn't ask for that. Yep. Um, I do like the little, the little, the scene where he's like crawling back and then like pushing himself back up to the stump and like reattaching and then trying to wake D up and then whatever the fuck that was in the sky that was coming around and eating the, the live creatures. There's like that blood mist. Uh, then that's when he started eating all that dirt as fast as he could to try to revive D. That was a good scene. I like that. It was a good scene. It um, was a good scene. You're not wrong. So yeah, D eventually, he storms his castle, right? He gets knocked down into a pit. He ends up seeing these three sirens who turn into like a three-headed snake that they say is Medusa-ish, but not what you think because she does not no. have snaky hair or turn you to stone. They essentially no. feed off of your essence. Yes. Facts. Which D had a lot of. He did. And they got oversatiated and, I guess, distracted by how much. Because they were in ecstasy when they're eating essence. But D had them in ecstasy for so long that they became somewhat complacent and lost and lost paying attention to him. And then he went like full-blown vampire and just started biting them in the neck. And then fucked him up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that covers that. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> now, mm-hmm. when he, before he went down into that cave, yep. he essentially got, like, he, he fell down that hole. Like, they, they dropped the floor out from underneath him. And he caught himself by using his cape. Like, his, his cloak reached up and grabbed the floor, and he was hanging there. And then the dude with the sword the time manipulation guy or whatever, the dimensional guy essentially cut the floor around the Cape. And then he fell. Is his Cape special? Um, his Cape, or is that just him being able to use his Dompier powers on his clothing to make his clothing do stuff? Cause that was like the Cape from like Dr. Strange. It is. As far as we know, it is just a regular Cape. Yeah. I don't think it is. 
There's nothing regular about that cape. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, no, it's just regular cape as far as I understand. So it could have been D using his vampire abilities because he does, I believe he does have some small form of telekinesis. Hmm. You so. also see him at one point like loading a gun, but then you never, I don't think I ever saw him once use the gun in this show. He has a lot of equipment. He has a lot of equipment. So he has his, I'm going to read you some of the equipment he's he's used over these books and movies. I want to know what the fuck so. that sword is. That sword is humongous. <laughs> Jesus. That makes Sephiroth's sword look small. Yeah, that sword is huge. So he has the wide brim traveler hat. That's you know. counted as equipment? Yes. Why? Oh, it's just clothing. It's iconic. Um, his blue pendant. What um, does that do? Uh, mysterious of unknown, mysterious and, and unknown of unknown origin. It has the ability to disable electronics through unknown means. The blue light shines brightly when activated. Oh, we should say D also has a cyborg horse, which was cool. He does. He does. I love that. I love his horse. His horse is dope. Uh, wooden needles made of unfinished wood, a foot long, used by D. Um, the speed at which he throws them is able, to, is able to pierce bulletproof glass and heavy armor with ease with perfect accuracy. So Jesus. he has wooden needles that he can throw through bulletproof glass. And wooden needles that he can throw yep. through bulletproof glass? Yep. Okay. It's potent in celerity points, man. I, ge- <laughs> I guess so. Especially to make wood go through fucking bulletproof glass. You try to wood would do whatever you want. Uh, his combat belt. He's combat utility belt. He's Batman now. Um, he wears it all the time. It houses various gadgets, weapons, and medical equipment. Some things found in it or attached to it are wooden needles, caltraps, microcomputer, capsules, broad bladed knife. Capsules, by the way, are the uh, things that he. I don't know if they show. I forget the show in the movie where he drops like a capsule into like water and drinks it. Nope. Okay. Well, that's how uh, a lot of dampiers eat. Basically, it's calcified blood. Okay. Um, and they drop it in water and turn it, and then they just drink it that way. Smart move. Yep. He has a broad bladed knife and many other things. Not all the items have been revealed. Cape is just a regular cape. That's why I said that. He has a black coat, coat as well. High black boots. A great sickle. A weapon wielded by Frost. It can not only take off a human head, but it have sufficient force to cut through two or three torsos at a time. D take this from Frost and use it against them when they were young. When the young man narrowly escapes D's playing the Grim Reaper literally. Um, there we go. Yeah, I didn't so see him have. Didn't, I didn't see him with the scythe. He did a lot of the stuff. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is in which I'm just saying, like the stuff he's had on him at some point or another. Uh, he has chameleon suit, um, which is basically an outfit he gets later, or uh, it's like a out, yeah, outfit he gets later that he can blend in with the environment that he's in. Okay. Um, he has a high powered sniper rifle. Oh, okay. Uh, nobility grenade. A grenade further enhanced by the nobility, giving an extra amount of explosive potential. D grabs this from Duke Gilson, um, men, and uses it to blast his way out of one of the castle elevators that are highly advanced and durable. Microcomputer. Translucent cylinder. I don't know. Oh, it's just like cylinder to carry shit. Makes sense. Um, electronic lamp. A dagger. Broad bladed knife again. Cow traps. Wire. Hook and thread. First aid kit. Black scarf. Uh, let me see. You know what? It, he might have... I wonder if he used this. Or he just kind of made it into one. The nobility blanket, that's like the blue scarf on the back of the horse. Okay. Um. Apparently, it's almost completely resistant to fire, water, cold, electricity, and heat. Um. It uses some of the nobility's technology. Like, they have their own fucking technology and shit. Because right. they've been around for forever, and they have nothing else better to do with their time. They're technomancers. Gotcha. Yeah, they just do shit. Uh, salsa booze. Well, that sounds like something we should try. The favorite drink of D and, and left hand, it seems. He seems to get a good urge for the stuff from time to time. It's a kind of alcohol that was said to be ten times as potent as absinthe. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it is served in a glass usually, but on occasion a, a drinking contest of it will be served in a mug. Who's having a drinking contest with that? All right, all right, Europe, step up your game. You heard it. Ten times stronger than absinthe. Step up the game. <laughs> god damn. Oh god, that's that's rough. D, uh, D, D true to the word has a drinking contest out of out drinking a saloon full of veteran drinkers, all except Basca, who empties the rest in the bar. With D in the contest, going through five kegs in twenty minutes. Jesus. Wow. D's an alcoholic. I like him more already. Um, he also has wild cobra whiskey. 
whiskey Jeez. with the head of a wild cobra in it. No, I'm all set. This whiskey was used to anis- the and I can't even say that right now. It's ana anesthesia, but it's ana anesthetics. Anna- yeah, maybe. Yeah, there you go. It's not anesthetics, but uh, yeah, anesthetics monster and supernatural creature in the in the five ton and over class. Jesus, uh, things like armored serpents or trembler rhinos. It was a drug more than a drink, and also more of a poison than a drug. <laughs> I love that. I want to market my alcohol like that. This is more of a drug than a drink, but it's also more of a poison than a drug. So, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. And even the most seasoned alcoholic would be knocked on his ass with the first sip. That's the shit Atticus was drinking. (laughs) Just taking swigs. I mean, so far, everyone who's taken a sip of it has been knocked in their ass. It's true. But him. Together, the, well, he's dead now, so it doesn't matter. Together, yeah. the three massive men, including Gil, might be able to drain the cup in two or three minutes. Sometimes the whiskey gave people nightmares, hallucinations, appear, apparently persuaded by pursued by unimaginable visions. They would scream no and help as they waved around a sword or fired wildly with a gun. That's not safe. <laughs> Needless to say, this drink was beyond even the extreme drink that warriors drink, absinthe. So absinthe, let me see, absinthe, is this the same absinthe? Is, oh, yep, it's the same absinthe. And maybe it's not. Oh, wow. I, I forgot Absol's in Highlander. All right. There you go. <laughs> Highlander reference. <gasps> I like it. I like it. We've come full circle since the last time we mentioned Highlander. We have. I don't know. Wh- Wouldn't that be really funny if we mentioned Highlander in the first episode of last year? I don't think we did. That would be really funny. We, yeah. I mean, we, we have referenced Highlander before. Oh, my God. That's terrible. So, apparently, somebody who drank this Wild Cobra whiskey falls out from this falls out and uh of drinking it and bl- unconscious and bleeds from every pore in their face oh jesus christ and then we have shangri-la wine you know drink the orders in a bar and- you know another time a cobra made somebody bleed from the face when you bit down in the face yep i like it zing yep synthetic coffee condensed nutritional supplements heat packs pack invader ivy i'm not gonna read all these fog of misdirection uh, mystical fog cable confusing the sense of direction of people and even inanimate objects such as projectiles. I don't know how that works exactly. So it's an intenebration bubble. <laughs> yes, he has an intenebration bubble. Okay. Even objects. Even objects. I, I just imagine the bullets. You shoot a bullet and then a bullet just I imagine the bullets from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. They go right. in like, where the fuck <laughs> we going? <laughs> yo, guys, turn right. yo, guys, I heard something over here. Zing. <laughs> God damn I like, it. I like it. Recon Hawk refers to a great hawk that has been fitted with recon equipment and a camera used to transmit whatever it observes. Oh my god. This sounds like something Fritzel would do. True. You know what? Like a... Yeah. Okay, you've already given me an idea. <laughs> Fritzel's now going to be a, a... What do they call those? Um, a falconer. A falconer. <laughs> he's going to he's going to multi-class into a falconer now. He's gonna have like a bird. He, like, a bird's gonna, have, gonna like, have like one of those like. He's gonna have a bird eyed, army. Like, he's gonna have like telescope bird army. I love it. Yeah, he's gonna have a bird army like one with like a telescope. He's gonna have one that has like a Gatling gun on it or some shit. Yeah, one bird Doing spreads its wings and it just has like rocket launchers underneath its wings like a jet. <laughs> <laughs> I, like it. I like it. I like it a lot. God damn oh my it. god! Apparently, he has a flute. Okay, uh, Tom um, Pierce like music. That's fine. He has a he has a a ten thousand dollar spelled D A L A bill. <laughs> it's a ten thousand dollar <laughs> bills, y'all. See it. He has a million dollar bag, which is a bag full of gold coins that add up to a million dollars. Jesus, he's rich. Yeah, he is. It was right. given to D by to hunt the Grand Duke Drago by the man in the iron mask. Oh shit, Leonardo oh. DiCaprio. Oh shit. All right. <laughs> All right, and uh, next, week's story, ep- next week's episode, Man in the Iron Mask. <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> I, I actually no. don't mind that I don't movie, mind though. the movie either, but it seemed really long, and I remember watching it in school, and <laughs> I don't was, want to do it again. I know for a fact it was two VHSs because I used to watch it yeah, on VHS. It's too long. I noticed that except for the cutting shins, blast, because whatever. I was reading from D's long sword. Do we have a length on D's long sword? I know it's long as fuck. fucking long. It is long. It's fucking huge. Uh, D's longsword is D's main weapon. Uh, that, that, I'm trying to see if it has a... They describe the blade in beautiful 
detailed, but I want to see if they have it in, in length. They don't. They don't. Uh, unfortunately, I think it breaks at some point. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, he has a long ass sword. Like a really long ass sword. Like a stupidly long ass sword. Yeah, like any Final Fantasy fans out there, you know that iconic picture of Sephiroth holding his fucking katana? Add another katana on top of that. That's how long D's sword is. It's dumb. Like, there's no way in hell this guy feasibly carries it. No, he he doesn't at all. But, like, it's not nearly that long when it's she. It's still super long as fuck when it's sheathed. But for some reason, when he unsheaths it, it's just like when it twice sheaths, its length. It's about the size of him. Like yeah. when it sheath, it's about it's probably like a five foot blade. When he unsheaths it, it gets like twice as big. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. <clears throat> I love it though. Yep. <laughs> and he has a gun that he never uses. And he has a high power sniper rifle. That, that, again, that I never saw him use. Although, why do you need the gun when well, you can throw wood through bulletproof glass? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, I mean why you know. why why would you use a gun when you have snake whiskey? I mean this is true too. Or cobra whiskey or whatever the hell it was. I wonder what happens if uh I wonder what happens if if, if uh if why Tom doesn't he coat his cobra bullets whiskey? in cobra whiskey? Why it is he just a poison soak the wood in cobra whiskey? Yeah. It's a poison, but it's also a drug, but it's also also a drink. Yeah. <laughs> but it's more of a poison than it is a drug, and it's more of a drug than it is a drink, but it's still all three. Oh, my head's going to explode. I love it. So, yeah, that's yeah. some of the gear that this dude carries. He has he, a lot of gear. He's yeah, Batman. He carries all the shit on him, by the way. He's he's Vampire Batman. He is Vampire Batman. Um, Bat- yeah, he's even got the rich part down. Yep. Um, so, essentially, he ends up, like... The girl ends up getting taken. D ends up rescuing her. And then the girl ends up getting taken again. And D goes goes after her and starts fighting the count. And pretty quickly and pretty easily gets the upper hand on this guy. uh, And like impales him to a wall. And then she, then he starts doing this like eyeball thing where like he's essentially mesmerizing Doris, and Doris like is mind controlled to go over, and she has this dagger, and she's gonna stab D. And then Dan comes, and she's just like, "No, Doris, you gotta wake up." And then she just does. It's like, oh, so Dan's power of persuasion is way higher than this ancient vampire's mesmerism power. No, no, no. Yep. What happened? No, oh, is it the love was, of a young brother? <laughs> no, Dan's Dan's words and love of a young brother prompted it was enough to prompt the willpower role that she succeeded in. <laughs> it's bullshit. No, I I like to believe that this guy is a fucking ancient vampire who had a lot of dots and dominate, and then came across fucking one of Devin's and uh, PCs. Facts. And he was just like, Back. yo, Doris, don't do it. And Doris is like, yo, I'm not going to do it. You persuaded me. I still I still just want to play a character that literally doesn't fight. I just talk people into killing themselves. Like, I just want to have the ability to do that. Like, that's, I just almost have the as, that's almost essentially two of your characters already. <laughs> No, I know, but I literally just want to have that satisfaction of like walking in a battlefield and like a guy pulls a gun at me. And I'm just like, come on, man. And he just shoots himself. It's like, there you go. Like, go like that. That 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 satisfaction, dude. Your mom, like I dude, want your mom told I want to be Kilgore in the third grade. Uh, like you're right. I want to be Kilgore. Like Jesus, or Kilgrave. Kilgore, yeah, yeah. Um, Kilgore's a different person. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack here a little bit and get slightly off topic, like we always do. Always, we always do. So, you said he has like these pellets. Mm-hmm. That he puts into water, and essentially it's like calcified blood, like just yep. I'm guessing just uh, like hardened blood that's been ground up into a, a pill. See, si, senor, um, it is specifically. I'll tell you in one second. It is specifically. If I can't find 
Oh, well, that's going to bother Kurt. I keep dropping this ball to make it light up, and all you can hear is it hitting my desk. And uh, Kurt, okay. Kurt always yells at me. He's like, Capsules. There you what go. Was that, what was that noise when you were like throwing stuff on your computer? I was like, Oh, yeah, I was just throwing a bottle cap on my keyboard. I didn't think you could next hear Next time it. he asks you that, next time he asks you, he'll be like, Taking my dick, smacking the desk. <laughs> my dick. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, capsules. D takes them in lieu of food. They contain dried blood, plasma, and nutrients. Dropping them in a cup of clear water produces blood that can be drunk. Apparently, this is a common source of substance for dampiers. An ordinary dampier would take one at each meal three times a day. Okay, so now my question. Yes. Modern day, like today. Okay. okay. Is that a feasible idea? Like in modern, right now? Yeah. I mean, it can be. I mean, I think it's more so a matter of, like, if you were, if we were going to talk in like terms of like vamp. Yeah. If you, I mean, that is a, that like, that is specifically why I'm bringing this. I I, I don't want to eat dried blood pellets if that's what you're. No, 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 no. I'm just thinking like if you could theoretically, like, I mean, like we make with the blood pennies. I mean, if you theoretically could like find a way to dehydrate blood and then grind it down into a powder but make it where you know dehydrate blood grind it down into a powder but somehow when it, even it's dehydrated it keeps the potency right uh i mean yeah i mean i think it's fair you didn't you know you, you just open up a capsule or like at the very least have like a fucking like a um like have you ever taken those uh like the airborns or whatever no. but like yeah the Kind of like an alka seltzer. Just have like an alka seltzer where like you just drop like two tablets of water. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is for vampire. Oh my god, was that the alka seltzer theme? It really was. It really I, was. I've and never then, heard that you, before. That's my first think, time hearing that. And then when you look back on that and you say it again, and you're like, that just sounds like you were constipated. All right, can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you sing that one more time? Why? Because I, I've that was my first time hearing this, and I want to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see the commercial. I don't it was, it was something about pop, pop, fizz, fizz. That's it was plop, 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 fizz, plop. fizz. That's even better than pop, pop, fizz, fizz. It's plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is! Oh my god, this is my new favorite thing. We're gonna be playing games, and I'm just gonna start singing this randomly. It's your second favorite jingle of all time. What was my first? The Sponge Monkeys. Oh, yeah, the Quiznos Sponge Monkeys. <laughs> oh, my God, I forgot about them. <laughs> okay, listeners, you need to go. I probably told you this several times, but I'm going to tell you again. Go Google Quiznos Sponge Monkeys and watch all the videos. It's the best. <laughs> I've already forgotten about the Alka Seltzer. <laughs> God damn it, Devin! I'm I get distracted easily. I apologize. It's all good. Um. So yeah. Uh. Essentially, so uh, she doesn't kill fucking D, and then the the princess shows up, who the count had put into fucking holding. His daughter, he's like, oh, hey, uh, you know, your mother was a fucking human whore. So you're, uh, you know, you're not full blood noble. And she just refused to believe it. And he's like, also, I kind of don't want you fucking up my my chi on my wedding. So just stay here. And he like knocks her out and like sus- puts her in suspension. Uh, but when he gets impaled to the wall, she shows up. And then the wall starts, like, the wall collapses in front of D and her. And then the whole castle starts collapsing. And she turns to him. And she's like, so if it's true, and you're the son or, you know, the child of our elder patron, then should I stay here? And, like, she essentially said, should I kill myself or should I go? And he's like, dude, you're part human. Like, just save yourself. It's it's don't be dumb. And she's like, nah, I'm full blooded stupid. And she just walks in. <laughs> she just walks into I'm the crumbling building. Stupid. I yeah. want to start using that line now. <laughs> 
Uh, and then she just Every walks into this player. Yep. I play with an Overwatch. I'm full blooded <laughs> stupid. I just make a new Smurf called Full Blooded Stupid. <laughs> and then she just walks into this crumbling building and presumably dies. Uh, and then D and the the rest of them leave. And then the fucking movie ends. This this really bothered me. The movie ends with D riding his horse, and then you see Doris and Dan fucking sprinting as fast as they can. And I figured, oh, they're running to try to catch up to him to try to get him to stay. Because I know Doris liked him, and Dan really liked him. You know, and, being about that life. Yeah, and then so next thing you know, they're up on this fucking mountain, like, cliff, and they're yelling and screaming at him. I'm sorry. At that distance, you would not hear them, first off. I mean, second, he's a he damn here. He might he have super hearing. hearing. I know. That's why I said second. He might have super hearing. He turns, looks at them. They start screaming more, and you don't see his smile, but you can tell he smiled because of his eyes. And then it instantly gets cold again, and he starts wandering off. And then the next five minutes of this movie is just soft music with him riding his horse through various scenery, and then it cuts to the credits. The whole last five minutes of the movie, I was like, I really don't want to watch this. Is there anything else that happens? And I started trying to like, I'd I'd mouse over the bar on YouTube. I'm like, it doesn't look like anything else happens, but I can't really trust this. And then nothing else happened. I'm like, "Mm, I should have just shut this off five minutes ago. Cause I missed nothing. Overall, I didn't care for the movie. Like I said, it had some good lore. Um, some go- good lore. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, not facts because you can't really type. You can't really write about facts when it's fictional stuff, because everybody has their own fiction on these things. Um, I appreciated some of the lore stuff they wrote. I'll just word it that way, I guess. And there were a couple of the characters and a couple of the scenes that I thought were cool and engaging. Overall, not my style of movie, but I, I don't hate it either. So I'm going to give it like a, if I'm going to give it a, like a letter grade, it'd be a, like a C plus, B minus. Uh, but we usually do the scales from one to 10. I'm going to give it like a seven, I guess. Fair for me anyway. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You go to six, right? I give it a seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I mean, it's fair. I definitely like the second one more than I like the first one. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give um, the second one a shot. Yeah, I definitely one. like the second one. I like the first one. Um, I have to get one second. Sorry, I'm trying to do something here. I don't know what it is about me and anime, though, listeners and Devin. But if the art style doesn't draw me in or doesn't at least kind of hook me at first, I start losing interest right away. And then it's really hard for especially animes to really grab me and pull me back. So because if it's visually appealing, then I feel like I can sit through story. No problem. But when it's not as visually captivating to me, it's it seems slower and more drawn out. I don't know. That's my problem. Also, did you hear Netflix is making a live action Airbender movie or show? Oh, uh, really? There's yeah. another. They're doing another one. Oh. Yeah. Well, they're doing not a movie. They're doing a show. It's gonna be a Netflix series. I, I mean, I'm still... The creator of it is actually part of it. So, I mean, maybe that will help. I mean, it might. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that. Are you still looking something up? I am. Sorry. Would it help if I gave you roughly three minutes and 11 seconds to continue looking something up? 
Yes. Okay, if you would like to mute so that way you don't talk through this, uh, Ross Boyd, Ross Malcolm Boyd, the guy who writes our, our music for Simply Unprofessional, and one of my best friends, and he's been guests on here numerous times, for my Christmas gift, sent me a bunch of different versions of my favorite song that he wrote. Now he's written that he wrote this song fucking years ago. Uh, I want to say when he it was right around the time when he really first started getting into music. It was probably one of the first songs he's wrote or written, uh, and I have it queued up, so I'm going to share it with you guys. And Devin, I'll let you know when it's over because I know you can't hear it, but I do. I'm going to send it to you too because I want you to listen to it. It. It is my it is. I can't say how much I love this song. Just listening to the different versions that he sent me put a big smile on my face, and it was the best Christmas gift I could ask for. Uh, so Ross, thank you. I love you. I miss you. And everybody listening, this is Ross Malcolm Boyd, and the song is called "Proud of My Rhinoceros." <laughs> And of course it stops. I've been having fucking problems. Oh man, it's just getting good. So, that cut out real quick. I don't know what it is with my stupid music player not playing music, Devin. I know I, I promised you the 3 minutes and 11 seconds and now I feel like I have to fill dead air. <laughs> ah, man, that infuriates me. Especially after I built up that, I built up that intro to that song. You built up to, you know, you're proud of your Nashers, and you know what? I don't blame you. But you know what? Uh, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Well, I will say to the listeners, if you want to hear this song, plop, plop, check out fizz, Ross Malcolm fizz. Boyd. You can go to rossmalcolmboyd.com. I think that's his website. It, there is a link in the description on the podcast you feed. You're correct. That is website. Um, also, go and harass him, man. You can find him pretty much anywhere. Just Google Ross Malcolm Boyd and just tell him, hey, we really, really want to hear Proud of My Rhinoceros because Webby spoke, you know, he upped it so much and then tried to play it and his fucking well, music yet. program crashed better again. Better yet, check, your, check his website. If he's coming to you locally, go see him. Yeah, well, he he won't be going across the pond anytime soon, I don't think. Sorry, cheeks. I mean, you know. Uh, but yeah, he does he does tour around the U.S. He he, he travels tour, around the U.S. And, up, and then basically, when he takes requests, just yell out, "Proud of my rhinoceros." There is he does get yeah, ah, man. I'm going to, I'm going to find, I'm going to put this song into the end of the episode. I don't even care. I will do the editing and I will make sure it gets played. Uh, I'm going to put this song at the end of the episode, so stick around after the outro music. You know what? I'll even make the outro music Proud of My Rhinoceros. So just stick around at the end when we do our closeout, and you can listen to Proud of My Rhinoceros. It, it's going to get played one way or fucking another. I don't even care. I like it. I'm so angry at my computer. <laughs> ah. All right, guys. So I think we're done, right? We're done? Yeah, I mean, we're what were you looking? Were you looking up something for the show? No, I was ordering food for dinner. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we're about an hour in. Um, I, mean, cool. I, I don't, uh, I don't have anything. Else. What would you rate this? But you didn't rate the movie. I didn't rate it. You're right. I mean, I would give it around. I mean, I don't think you're too far off in the seven. I mean, I, I think definitely, you know, it's it's one of those. I think it's fallen into like kind of the cult classic kind of a thing because it it definitely was kind of the precursor to Castlevania. Right. Um. This the books in general kind of led up to Castlevania. They came out three years before Castlevania came out. Um. And I think they kind of were served as inspiration. Um. And then going forward, uh, there's just a lot of solid vampire fiction in there. Um. And with that being said, I mean, I think it's fallen firmly into a cult classic. I would give it about a seven point five and eight. All right. So like, like I said, we're not too far off of that one. I'll get about a seven and a half and an eight. I really like the second one better. The second one definitely has a more updated art style. Um, it has a, a little bit more action to it. 
And yeah, I mean, and from that point, it kind of works out. And Vampire Hunter D is a really weird show series anyway, because we don't really get a lot of D's background. He, he's just there and things just, you know, and that's really what it is. Like, so you could pick up a book for Vampire Hunter D and you would, you know, you're not missing a backstory. Right. There really is no backstory there. It, they intentionally keep it vague. Um, now, are these like novels, like books, books, or are these like comics or like graphic? No, novels? no, there's full. I mean, the, well, there's been a couple things. So there's publication. So there's, they've been an animated film. Obviously, there's been audio dramas from ni- 1985 was the animated film. That was the first adaptation out, outside of the books. Then there was audio dramas uh, from 1988 to 1990. There's a video game in 1999. There was an animated film in 2000, 2007 manga animation uh, adaptation, a 2016 uh, comic book series, which went on hiatus, but should be resuming production sometime last year going into this year. There is an upcoming animated series that has been in the works since 2015 and they had the first draft of the pilot was completed in October, 2018. I think Netflix may be looking at that one. I could be wrong. If they restyled this kind of in the fashion of like how they did Castlevania, I might get more pulled into it. And then, so with the books you have, let's see here. Looking at all the books. What was the first book? Where are the books that talk to me? To publication history. That's what I'm looking for. So it's a series. There are 31 books. Yep. Wow, all right. Uh, he's written 31 Vampire Hunter novels. Vampire Hunter novels spanning 44 volumes. Um, so you have a total of English editions. I'll go with the English editions because I can. So you have Vampire Hunter D itself. Which first came out, which came out as a volume one. Let me see. Vampire Hunter D novel. It is 300 pages. Jeez. So volume one is 300 pages. And then you have Razor of Glass. So that's the first book. Then you have Razor of Glass, which is also 300 pages. Then you have Demon's Death Chase, which does not have a Wikipedia page. So in order, you have Vampire Hunter D. Razor of Gales, Demon's Death Chase, Tales, Tale of Dead Town, The Stuff of Dreams, um, Pilgrimage of the Sacred and the Profane, Mysterious Journey to the North Sea, which is 280 pages. So, yeah, I mean, they're all pretty... They're all pretty solid across the board in terms of length. So if you want to dive into all these, you've got about 3,000 plus pages to dive into, people. Fair enough. 34 books, 34 books, and they're all about 200 plus pages each. So there you go. All right. There you go, listeners. Got some stuff to dive into. Well, I think that'll wrap it up. I might have actually gotten my music thing to work. We're going to test this out one more time, Devin. All right. Webby's proud of his rhinoceros, but not so much his... uh... His uh, music stuff. No, my music player is fucking shit on this computer. He's not proud of it. I am not. I don't know what this is. Is it like the shit that just came with it? Yeah. Oh, it's groove music, I guess. Oh, fuck groove music. I don't understand. I need a better music player. I'll help you up. Um, And you know what? I kind of want to play this just in the media, the Windows media thing. I think maybe. Yeah, I play. If if I'm going to play a song like that, I'll play it. Hold on. I'll play it. Do you think it'll play better in... Probably. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Um, all right, so, Devin, do you, uh, I, I'll, I'll let you do sign-offs real quick, and then I'll, I'll ask you to just mute so we, we don't talk through this, because I do want to appreciate this music. Um, where can people find you on the interwebs? I mean, you guys can find me on Twitch on Twitter at DMP underscore, or not DMP underscore Pookie, that's my old one. No, that's right. DMP Pookie? Yeah, DMP underscore Pookie. I know what I'm talking about. I haven't done this in a while. It's a new year. Shit, I'm tired. It's anyway. a new year. Shit, he's tired. Leave him alone. I'm straight. All right, there you go. Oops, you can find me at DMP right. underscore Pookie and on Twitch at Pookie Killed Me. I just tried sending you the wrong fucking thing. <laughs> you would have probably just Pookie? started laughing. What? I can't even fucking send this shit to you. What are you trying to send to me? Fucking music file. I hate, I hate everything about 
technology right now. Where that's what I recommend using. That's the music. That's the audio visual player I use for everything. All right, I'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, Did you say where you can find you on Twitch? Yes. All right. Uh, And as always, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Jacks Forest Walker, all one word, and on Twitch at DM Webby, and on Instagram at something. Uh, Fucking something. I got this last time. I'm assuming it's Patrick.Webster. I just never remember what I put at the end of it. 52. 52. All right. I'm never going to fucking remember that. But it's what, usually it's, it's always it's always Patrick Dot Webster everything. Why did you put fifty two? Uh, off the top of my head, the only thing I can think of is I I'm used to be real big into like card tricks and stuff, and there's fifty two cards in a deck of cards. Well, there you go. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, and as always, everybody, fuck Booster Gold. And here is proud of my rhinoceros. At least an attempt. Big, yeah, better than the rest. He's good at everything. I'm proud of my rhinoceros. If you could manage to believe, he'll never fail to test his English and arithmetic. Test higher than the best. I'm proud of my rhinoceros. I'm proud of my rhinoceros. I'm proud of my rhinoceros. I'm proud of my rhinoceros, yeah. He's loved by all the Indians, yeah, no one dares contest. They'll know him when he's seen. of the team He's everybody's dream He operates machines Defended by the queen I'm proud of my rhinoceros, yeah I'm proud of my rhinoceros, yeah I'm proud of my rhinoceros, yeah!